that were a little bit more, you know, so you street say, smart. We say you were a good kid, but you say you were a bully. So you were you a know, good my, bully. My mom, yeah, my mom went to church. Good, was you, were, a bully. you were good at bullying. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but I was a good kid. But yeah, you know, I like to play That's pranks. Awesome. I like yeah. to do all those okay, things. Good, so good. I did start doing drugs. I remember I would hide them in my trunk and everything. Drugs meaning like cocaine. Cocaine, weed. yeah, cocaine. Uh, okay. I wasn't too much in the weed. I would smoke every once in a while. But yeah, cocaine. Yeah was a big one and then i got into a heavy alcohol crown royal oh yeah uh-huh. to the point where i just go on my own and just drink at the bars Eesh. okay oh, wow. so that played a big factor and once she told me to leave i was like say ya yo 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 um, welcome back we're back again back again to life speaks here we go yeah yep uh-huh. all right welcome to the scandal just kidding welcome to life speaks life the podcast speaks. we're back again with a new back episode again. and so i am your host guicho breach and this is my co-host casey case casey Favorite case tennessee representative representing tennessee yeah. and uh what are our sponsors casey uh we have 510 architecture and design for all your architectural needs hello at our, holler at our boy daniel martinez <laughs> he's got so bad like Cairo prep <laughs> hernandez drywall you frame it the wallet, Hernandez Drywall, and the choosing the choosing Hope Foundation is focused on prison and parole ministry. So parolees, where you at? So represent. We, I mean, come and give you life to God. Yep, man. Jesus, Jesus, and man. What's the other? God one? will move the great uh, the Potter's House Christian Fellowship. The Potter's House Christian in, Church, GRA, Greater GR, Randolph Area, Greater Randolph Area. Yep, man, doing big things, moving for God. Yeah, God is moving, amen. And and we just, I just, I'm astounded to see what else he's got. So, life, so life speaks, aka the scandal. And so, today we have a good, uh, great privilege, uh, amen, we, uh, to uh, have uh, Mr. Edgar Garcia uh, with us. And so, um, welcome to the show, Edgar. All right, thank you welcome. for having me here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's gonna be good, bro. It's gonna be good, man. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, great privilege to have him here uh, today at our on our pro- on our podcast. And so, if you don't know who Edgar is, I've known Edgar for many many years. Him and his wife, and um, he is the current door director for uh, my mother church, Pastor Ben Rodriguez, and uh, and uh, just doing a powerful, great job. Him and his wife there. And so, um, so uh, how is it? How is it being a door director? Real quick, man. <laughs> Uh, we had to fill some big shoes, you know, yeah. Leonard and Alexis, they did a lot. Shout out to Leonard so, and Alexis, yeah, man. Yeah, he's yeah. Doing, he's stone. H-Town, so, H-Town. They were doing a lot and everything. Uh, so some of the stuff that uh, is dealing with door directors, uh, he helped me out with already yeah. before Mississippi and uh, as far as uh, events, when we want to start doing like puppet ministry, stuff like that. He's like, yeah. okay, take it, you know, yeah. go ahead. And so a lot of that helped. Um, when he gave me the privilege, you know, just to be able to yeah. handle those things. Absolutely. And That's then cool. uh, Harvesters was another one of those things where I learned that me and my wife, uh, we tag team on it. Yeah. Uh, I think we work together great. Awesome. We team up and everything like that too. Awesome. So it's good, uh, kind of like being a armor bearer to our pastor too. Absolutely. Starting to see a lot of things. Absolutely. Goes and deals with and I think it's powerful to, uh, to um, you know, see everything God's doing in you and your wife's life. Cause I remember you all since, I mean, I remember you since you were a new convert, you know what I mean? And, uh, and so I, it just think it's powerful to see what God is doing, you know, and then, you know, I'm sure eventually here soon, you're going to get launched out somewhere, you know? And so I just, to see the progress in the process, the progress, you know, through the process, you know, of coming in the church and how, what God's doing in your, in your marriage and your family. And then eventually, you know, here is getting sent out. I think that's just so powerful. I think that's a great man. I think you're doing a great job, by the way, bro. Well, thank you. So awesome. But um, so speaking about um, back in the days when you came in the church and stuff. So uh, just want you to speak a little bit on on your life and uh, uh, coming into the church. Um, so tell me where you're from. You know, growing up as a teenager, things of that sort. However you want to say it, and just and when we'll take it from there. All right. Well, I was born in a small town, Raymondville. My parents are from Mexico. My grandma left from Mexico to California. That's my dad over there. So Raymondville, what's Raymondville? Raymondville, at? it's a small little town in where uh, the valley. Probably about forty-five minutes from McAllen. Yes. Oh wow! Okay. So I was actually I was born in Raymondville, but my grandma lived in a little town 
it was a high school, middle school, elementary. It was La Sada. So mm-hmm. I was born in Raymondville. Then we moved back to, we were in Mexico for a while. And my mom and my dad went through a divorce mm-hmm. by the time I was a uh, one-year-old, mm-hmm. I believe. So oh, wow. my mom remarried. Uh, my stepfather, he was about 60 years old. She was only like 22 really? at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He was 60 and she was 22? He was in his oh, 60s, wow. yeah. He was older than my grandma, too, at the my time. <laughs> so, but no, I mean, uh, yeah, he was, he was great to me. Good, good. Also and everything. So uh, fast forward, we are in McAllen. That's where everything really started. As a uh, teenager. As just a teenager. Yeah, okay. Teenager. And uh, I mean, I was a good kid. I was yeah. a good kid. Yeah, I was a bully and everything. Yeah. And I did hang around with some uh, other guys that were a little bit more, you know, so you street say, smart. You say you were a good kid, but you say you were a bully. So you were you a know, good my, bully. My mom, you yeah, my mom went to church. Good, was you, were, a bully. you were good at bullying. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but I was a good kid. But yeah, you know, I like to play That's pranks. Awesome. I like yeah. to do all those okay, things. Good, so good. my bully side, and I would get bullied on too. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, my mom was a church going uh, woman at one point. Okay. And then, yeah. Uh, we were doing good. I mean, just being a teenager, playing football out there. I had my uh, first child at 17 years old. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. So, 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 uh, so here you are. You're in this little town, right? Yeah. You are this teenager. You're, you know, you're, you're, gr- you're trying to grow up. You're growing up, whatever. And then um, you said he, this is where things really started. What led, like, what dynamic of life happened that here you are and then you end up uh, uh, getting a girl pregnant? Uh, party scene? Uh, no, no, it? it wasn't partying or anything like that. Uh, my friend Victor actually, you know, he was dating a girl. Uh, things went wrong, and then she calls me, starts talking about you know venting out and everything. And mm-hmm. oh man, here I come, Light yeah, shining on you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean things didn't go right, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, that was you know one of the first things I did and everything. So how I did you feel when you door. first found out? You're like. Oh, um, I was scared, man. I was scared. I was, mm. you know, 16 years old because when Miranda was uh, first born, uh, I had just turned 17. Mm. She was born two months later. That's, but that's young, man. yeah, yeah. Mm. I know. I remember I was scared. They know what to do. Uh, her mom had found out and I was like, oh, my gosh. So I told my mom, my mom started crying. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be a grandma. She was all excited. I was like, whoa, Duh. totally <laughs> the opposite of what I thought, you know, yeah, yeah. was going to be her reaction. So, uh the relationship didn't last, you know. So it was just a circumstantial thing. It wasn't because of drugs and alcohol. It was just circumstance. Yeah, it was. And then it just fornication, it happened. man. Yeah, fornication. It, it just happened, and then here yeah. you are having to deal with that. So was your approach like I'm gonna be a dad? Yeah, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a dad, but um, I didn't get a job. I was trying my mom owned business. My stepfather he owned a business, so I was just helping out, you know, doing mowing the lawn, doing yeah. things the teenager does, you know. Yeah. yeah. And no responsibility. I didn't get my first job till I was 21. And I'm oh, wow, embarrassed wow. to say that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they own businesses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a good. And then at 18, yeah, I did start doing some street hustle and everything. Okay. So. Street hustle, I mean, what? Yeah. Selling uh, drugs or drugs, something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Drugs. Oh, so you got into that And it eventually. wasn't that big? No. Yeah. No, it was just enough to party out and everything. Too. Yeah, but you were just oh, doing okay. your own little thing. So yeah. some drugs around in the area. And that's already and afterwards around the eight. Age of. And that was because you were trying to support your child? No, no, no. I was out of my child's life okay. way oh, before, wow. yeah. I didn't so, even last in her life. So where was, so how did that happen? I mean, what was the whole situation? Is that a, the first marriage or how was No, is, that was just. Uh, that was just a little relationship. It was just. Had a kid, went on with your life. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, already at 18, uh, I started dating uh, another girl, which is Edgar and uh, Ashley's mom in high school. I met her in high school. We started dating. So I stopped selling and everything like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to get my life straight, you know, to impress. Uh, so I'm 20, 20 years old, get her pregnant again, you know, get her pregnant. Ah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So this time I'm going to do things right. Okay. Yeah. Talked to her parents, got myself a job, and, uh, you know, we got married. We got married, and uh, things were going good. We got married. I, was, I had just finished H- HVAC school. And at the same time, I was working for Peter Piper as a game room attendant. So, a- uh-huh. so HVAC meaning ACs? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you went to HVAC school. Yeah, I had just finished it. That's I had just cool. finished it. And I was working at Peter Piper. I had just gotten into Peter Piper as a game room attendant, my first job. Uh-huh. And uh, once I saw the salary, they, they offered me a promotion uh-huh. to run my own game room. 
So mm-hmm. I saw salary and then five seventy five for starting HVAC. Yeah. So I picked Peter Piper. And mm-hmm. this is all in that little town in the valley? In McAllen. This is already in McAllen. Oh, now yeah, you moved yeah. To McAllen. I moved to McAllen. I was born in Raymondville, but in McAllen I was there since I was like four years old. Oh wow. Oh, okay. okay. So then what happened? So you, you took the job HVAC? No, no. I Peter stayed at Piper. Peter Piper. Oh, okay. Stayed okay. at Peter Piper at the cool. age of 21. We had Edgar. Okay. We had gotten married. We had Edgar. And things were going good. You know, I had a good career. We had uh, bought a house about three years later. Mm-hmm. We bought our own house. Uh, we had, you know, vehicles. Our house mortgage with insurance and everything, because of what we gave down, was about $400. Mm. Mm. So we had just had that. It's 2000 in 2004, we had Ashley. In 2003, it was 2003, I think it was 2003, we had Ashley. And I think three months later, we had just had a brand new home and everything. And I was messing around. Uh, uh, I don't want to get much into that, but yeah, yeah. I messed up, man. I messed sure, up. Absolutely. And let's see, y'all, wholeheartedly. Now, at, at any point in, uh, in you know, since you, since you were a kid, a youth, up to this point, was Jesus ever a factor in there, like a uh, religious background? Jesus or wasn't uh, to me. Church was to my mom. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, she was a believer. Did until, you ever did, did you ever go to church with her? Yeah. Okay. Did you yeah, absorb we, anything or no, anything I, like that? I can't remember. I remember going skating. Uh, so you were just there. I, yeah, I was there. Uh, you know, I couldn't remember much until, sadly to say, when I was an adult, I came over mm-hmm. here. So, uh, so as you're as you're growing up and you're going through different things, you know, the first pregnancy, you know, going on with your life, whatever you were doing, and then here you are. Uh, you're married now and you're having more kids. Uh, you know, you're saying here you made some mistakes in that relationship and in that marriage. Um, uh, as you're dealing with the issues of those things, did Christ ever factor into that? It was like, no. uh, there was people who witnessed to me. They saw the signs. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't just happen from one day to the other. Yeah. All right. It started off by, uh, in our, in our marriage, our marriage was going good. You know, it was going good. We had Edgar. Mm -hmm. He was like my best friend. He was everything on my days off. I would take him out everywhere. Mm -hmm. We were like this. Uh And um, she was going to college. She was going to college. I mean, things were going good. And uh, I remember it started off with just uh, the little issues, fighting, Uh disagreements. Mm -hmm. And they would start to escalate. Mm -hmm. Name calling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it wasn't just a name like you jerk. It was something else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would call her derogatory you know? stuff. Yeah, the B word and everything. So yeah. it started escalating. And I will never forget there was this one time, uh, this movie, I don't know if you all remember, with Richard Gere, Unfaithful. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever seen it. No, that. we wanted to see no, it so I bad. We wanted to see it so bad. And I remember I was, a, I was a workaholic. I'd always be at work. And I was like, hey, we got to go watch this movie. So she went with her cousin Janie. And I remember, she, I was like, man, you have to go watch it. So what was it about? And she's like, about this guy who works a lot. Duh. You know, she's like, about a guy who works a lot and his wife cheated on him. And I was like, what? Uh-huh. Man, so mind battle started. I was a uh-huh. real jealous person too. Yeah. And I was real jealous and everything. Uh-huh. So yeah, things started like that. And I started looking, you know, at work, just flirting. Just yeah. flirting oh, at work. Wow. It starts little by little. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get much into detail, sure. but... Yeah, I messed up, man. I messed up. I mean, it takes uh-huh. two, too, because there was other things, um, you know, but... Uh, so, then the, so, so then it, that led to the marriage yeah. ending? Yeah, it was, okay. a, it was a December. I remember it was December right before uh, Christmas. I remember I grabbed all my stuff and said, say, yeah. I mean, oh, she, man, she told me to pounce. leave, but she was mad. Yeah. You know, I realized now that she was just upset and everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, told me to leave, and I took it as... Leave forever. And you left. And I said, are you sure? She's How like, old yeah. are you at this time? Uh, I was about, man, I think 24, 25. I probably was And so you literally, oh, you, wow. you, you actually took it as, well, you yeah. want me to go? I'm gone. Yeah. And I was just waiting. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I was waiting for those words. Uh, yeah. Just to have an excuse. Uh-huh. So I was waiting for those words. Uh, I had already started drinking. Alcohol was another factor. Was you drinking in the heavy? marriage before we wouldn't drink. We would drink every once in a while going out to clubs, me and her. Mm-hmm. We would have our times. Her parents would take care of Edgar. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was good. And then once I started bringing alcohol into our home, I mean, I had my own house yeah. Yeah. now because we lived with our in-laws twice. Uh-huh. And uh, they tried helping us out. And I thanked them for it. 
So once I started bringing alcohol, that also, that was another factor because after that, I started doing drugs again mm. and all these things. So, so, and so, okay. So you, you know, the marriage ends where, at what point does you going back to your old ways come in or is that your, was it, that it your started, old ways? It started, it started growing in my marriage. It okay. started, man, I was like, man, like, okay. The old Edgar is coming back. Old Edgar mm. meaning what? Like the way I was in high school. Okay. The way I just was in high school. Just wanted to be free and loose and yeah. out there and just no commitment. No exactly. Kind of, okay. What I thought about freedom, it was just, it, you know, freedom to me at that point was just going out, not having commitment, going mm -hmm. in and out whenever I wanted to from my house. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought freedom was. Like, hey, no yeah. chains attached. We can mm -hmm. live here. Yeah. And that was so you didn't want any of your responsibilities or anything. No, I mean I was working. I thought I was doing uh, all the good things. Yeah. So uh -huh. you probably had a nice thing. car. Huh? You probably had a nice car. So you were like, it was yeah, a grand yeah. damn. Yeah, at that time yeah. it wasn't anything. Like I mean, that. I'm just saying. But like, yeah, that's I mean, what it we is. didn't need like, anything. I, yeah, yeah, we did not yeah. need yeah. anything. Okay. So okay, but I did start doing drugs. I remember I would hide them in my trunk and everything. Drugs meaning like cocaine, cocaine, weed. yeah, cocaine. Uh, okay, I wasn't too much in the weed. I would smoke every once in a while, but yeah, cocaine. Was a big one, and then I got into a heavy alcohol, Crown Royal. Oh yeah, uh -huh. to the point where I just go on my own and just drink at the bars. Eesh. Okay, oh, wow. so that played a big factor. And once she told me to leave, I was like, "Say yeah." And so when she told you to leave, I mean, you just like, I'm just going all out, just be free. Yeah, yeah. I remember going and got a thousand dollar loan. Uh, oh wow! By myself, so. a thousand dollar loan for what? Uh? Like what, is, what, is, what was that? For? I, I bought. I bought some. Cocaine drugs, and yeah, whiskey. and try to try to <laughs> go do what I did in high school. Try to slang. Oh, uh, so you got fronted some stuff? Huh? You got fronted? Yeah, I something? was like, I'll go, and I I knew people, and and I tried doing that. I tried doing that, but it wasn't the same as it was in high school. Uh -huh. You know, I was old school now. And I mean, uh, I, the good thing you never, uh, you, I mean, you never got busted or anything. Like that. Oh, I almost did. I, I almost did. You want to talk and, about and, that or? Yeah, uh, there was this place called the Yacht Club. This guy. Uh, Rock, he had a he had a brother. He had a brother, so he contacts me. He's like, "Hey, man, I'm at the yacht club. Can you come real quick?" All right. I was with my friend Rick. Remember Rick? Is he? Was, is he? I, I was talking about that to Daniel earlier. He passed away. He's the one that passed yeah, away. He passed okay. away. So his older brother Edward, me and him were real close. We grew up together. Now he was a big stuff man. Mm -hmm. This guy sold everything you could find wow. down the valley. He was yeah. He had houses that he would rent out and. Or crack houses, all these things. But uh, I would hang around with, I mean, he, he had gotten locked up. So me and Rick started hanging out. And uh, Rick took me there. And I remember I had a sack, man. I had a sack of drugs. And I go to the restroom, shake his hand, gives me the money. And I turn around and there were security right there. Oh, wow. And I was like, my whole life flashed before me. Oh. That's it. That is it. And they're like, stop right there. We saw everything. And I was like, Gosh, and all of a sudden, I remember they just, they went like that, you know, uh, you know, I, I was, I was like sweating. I thought that was it, man. I'm in. And they took off. And I was like, what? So I'm carefully walking and I see this whole fight broke out. A big fight. Everything was going crazy. And the only thing I did is just run. I dropped everything I had. I ran, got in the car. And that was the last time I sold. I tried yeah. doing this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, good thing, yeah, told, yeah. good thing I you didn't like, get caught or wasn't anything like that because then we might be having sitting here having a conversation, but from the parole. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, man. I'll be like, I was like, like parole, <laughs> man. You know, he's been down 10 years. And I don't know if there were cost, man. I remember they had the walkie talkies and everything. It could have been securities from the club, but I was like, that's it, man. And I remember I walked out. There was a whole fight. And I remember just dropping everything. I ran to Rick's car. We took off, and I was like, I ain't going to touch that, man. Mm -hmm. So somebody got lucky with your drugs that day? Or uh, probably, man. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, that was a night. So it was like, somebody man. came up. Yeah. Wow. Was, uh, my friend did, Rick did get busted after. Did he do time for that? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, oh, man. That's the guy we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, he did yeah. some time he for that. He did time. How, his how, brother how much did he do for that? Like? Uh, well, they busted him sending a key to, uh, I think it was. Chicago, big, I think. That's big time. Oh, wow. yeah, he served some time. Yeah, that's big time. Bed, yeah, that's big time. Yeah, that's eighty five percent. He did his time in Chicago. Oh uh, no, no. Oh, okay. he, he was in McKellen. They were oh, already okay. waiting for him. Oh, okay. Ooh. I think so. Wow. So then you left that. You're like, you know what? I ain't doing yeah, that. Yeah, uh, that was. 
I was through with Adman at that time. So it, in that moment, did Christ ever factor in right there? At that moment, no. Still no. No. no you know, I always yet. ask I that was, question because yeah. I'm like, I always wonder like at what point does Christ begin to be like, you begin to be like, man, Jesus. Like at, like, at what point do you make the connection? But, you know, uh, uh, so what was the perspective you mentioned in one of your uh, uh, lists, uh, my view on freedom as a sinner. What, what, was, yeah. what was that re- re- uh, it, reference to? Doing, just partying out, man. I would yeah. literally party out every, like, Friday, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mm. You know, it was almost like an everyday thing. And still maintain the job. And still maintain the job. I was faithful with my job. That's the weird oh, thing. Wow. I'd always be there on time. Uh, my job, man, I mean, uh, my boss, Davo, I remember. I mean, he loved me, man. He was like a big yeah. brother to me. So you were a and, functioning uh, at it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be at work sometimes all, all messed up. And one time he told me, hey, can you smell that? It smells weird. And I was like, no, I can't smell it. And he punched me or he slapped me across the chest like, yeah, your nose is all burnt. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this Dang. guy knows, you know. So... Later on, he did witness to me, but after oh, doing all these that things... that guy witnessed to you? Yeah, my boss. Yeah, because okay. he had gone through some marital problems too before, and he had gotten saved. Oh, wow. Oh, got wow. saved after that, restored his marriage, but... Uh, when he witnessed to you, what did you think? I mean, what was your... You know, he was witnessing to me because he saw me, the path I was going into, and I really didn't care. Yeah. You know? Really? really didn't care, but uh, mm. uh, a little bit... Be, uh, in 2004, I think it was already in 2004, right before I got uh, promoted, uh, talking about Jesus and everything, my Tio Pepe, well, when I would be alone with no friends, my resources started dwindling down. And right before going back to my mother's to live with her, I remember being suicidal mm. because when I was with no friends, I'd be at home thinking about my my children, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. thinking about the life that I had. Yeah. And part of me wanted to go back. Yeah. And those words saying, I'll never come back. Yeah. You want me to leave? I'll never come back. Mm. And they would play and play over my, you know, yeah. my head. And uh, I was just like, man, I just wanted to die at that point. I felt lonely. And uh, finally, I ended up having to go to my mother's house. I'd still party out. And then in those moments where I was alone, I was alone in the room I was staying at, at her house. Uh, I'm there crying because I wanted my family back. But at the same time, I love partying out. I love the drugs. And I'm battling this. I'm sitting down on the edge of the bed. And I'm high. I'm drunk. I'm everything. And my friend Edward, Rick's brother, he had come out of prison. And then they locked him back in. So he had told me, hey, go get the dogs. I put them in the attic, So, meaning his guns. He had three guns. Mm-hmm. So I remember I, I had one of his handguns and everything, and I'm just like, man, I'm just battling. I'm battling. Wow. And I put it down. I'm crying, man. I'm crying, you know, seeking something. Mm-hmm. And I told my mom, I just want to die. I just want to die. So she freaks out. She hides all the knives and everything. She didn't know about the, the gun. She hides the knives. says, you're crazy. And at that time, I had an uncle, my tío Pepe, my dad's brother, he was a pastor of a small church. He grew up Catholic. We would always make fun of him because family was real tight mm-hmm. and he was never in our functions. Now I know why. Mm. Oh. So she tells me, go to his house. And I remember going, I looked for him and uh, he's just talking to me. He's talking to me and he opened up the Bible and uh, in Revelations where he says, I knock at the door, at your door, and, you know. Yeah, I'm there standing, and he's just reading it to me, man, and he asked me, do you want to pray? And I, I'm here, like, yeah, just pray. And I remember when he prayed, I felt this, something just overwhelming, mm. but I felt chills. It was scary for me at the time, but it's like, man, there was a heavy presence, like, man, like something's going on, mm. yeah. and I'm crying, man, I'm so crying, and spirit. he's like, that's the Holy Spirit, mijo. Amen. Yeah. He's like, that's the Holy Spirit. Like, what's that? I'm, not, I'm over here looking around, and he's like, this, you know, he loves you. Amen. So he signed the Bible. He gave me the Bible. I still have it. And it was June 2004, I think, July 2004. And I think that's when uh, I stopped doing drugs, taking them in. You know? Let me ask you a question, Edgar. Uh, so when you're, there in the, when you're there in your room or whatever, and, uh, and you had the gun to your head, 
what kept you from pulling the trigger? Uh, and Edgar, Edgar was one of the things I loved my son. Yeah. I loved my son. And, uh, I just, you know, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. I was scared. I was like, man, okay. Uh, if I die right now, I didn't think of where I'm going to go. I'm just like, man, I just, I hated my life, but I loved the party, man. Mm-hmm. I loved the nightlife. And I, I mean, I didn't pull it, but I was just desperate, man. There was like, I was looking for something and, and, and I was just. And so my follow-up question, Edgar, is like, you, you were saying that you, you wanted your family, but you were struggling with, you wanted to party like, like detail what that struggle was like, like uh, you fornic- don't think- fornication, man. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it included a bunch of stuff. But I'm saying, yeah. like, like the the struggle was, like, I just want to be free and no commitment. Was that the what was the thing that was like? This is what's drawing me. I I knew. Uh, the family that I had before, you yeah. know, I I knew that, and I desired the family life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I was, I was blinded, man. I mean, I had a chick, yeah, and a chick mm-hmm. and everything, and it'd be hard for me to separate from that. You know, yeah. I I love the, yeah, just the, the freedom, side, the, yeah. the 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 ability to just up and go and not have yeah. to worry about coming back or not coming or whatever you have to do or just not have to be responsible, just worry about you and whatever your. Uh, needs were yeah. or whatever gratified you at the moment and that's all you had to and focus it, yeah, on and it's hard to explain man i the don't know Luis, it's it's yeah it's just hard to explain because i mean i would cheat on that person too you know i was yeah. just oh man i was just, just yeah feel that i was just like but there was something i don't even know how to explain was it a void? Was it like yeah. you were feeling like and the reason why i'm asking these questions Edgar, because it's like people see these videos these podcasts yeah. and I want them to be able to identify themselves through your mm-hmm. and be like, that's what I feel. Like, was it a void? Was it an emptiness? Were yeah. you lacking it, something? It was, yeah. I had no friends around. Okay. When I had no friends around, everything, that would hit me. It would just mm-hmm. hit me. Loneliness. Mm-hmm. You know, having a family, I wasn't lonely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I felt the love. You know, I felt yeah. the love and everything. And with friends and everything, I mean, there was no love. There was just yeah. everything yeah, that was, there. you know, fornication. There was, there was no love. Yeah. It was just pleasure, and it, it was like a. I, it's hard to describe. It's just like a pulling. Like it really it was, was just like pulling a wrenching, me, but I, yeah. I felt empty. I felt you know, depressed. Everything was just on me, man. Where I had to take drugs and drink. Just so drinking, you could yeah. I, I would drink. I would drink to the point. Mama said I was crazy. I'd drink, get home, knocking the TV down, throwing up. I'd wake up. That was me. Yeah. Almost mm. on a daily basis. Man. Miserable feeling. Yeah. Miserable. Yeah. Okay, and then when Man. when when your uncle prayed for you, right? He prayed for yeah. you or prayed with you? Uh, like he led you in a sinner's prayer. Yeah, he, he, prayed he, over he you. read a scripture, mm-hmm. prayed with me. Uh, he probably led me through the prayer of salvation. I mean, he's Christian. Yeah, he's Christian. Yeah. And so you uh, felt the Holy Ghost. What happened from that moment that you felt the Holy Ghost? You're like, he's like, Jesus loves you. You're like, man, what is that's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? Man, what happened problem. from that point? Like, was that a pivotal point, or was it just kind of like? No, no, that that was a reference point to me because I remember that was the last time I did drugs, and it's so easy for me to go get the Bible and say that that's the last time I was messed up. Okay. The alcohol came again a little mm-hmm. later. Okay. Uh, I was still in fornication, mm-hmm. but there was something in me that's like, man, I remember going to Willie at work, like, hey, Willie, I'm in, man, you know, because. These guys were religious. Willie and Tavo at work. They mm-hmm. they both went through marital issues too. Mm-hmm. Same thing. And I remember going, "Hey, I'm in, man." And and not long before, not long after that, uh, I got promoted to general manager, and they sent me off to Houston. So I think that helped me pull away from a lot of the lifestyle that I had in the valley too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got okay. promoted to. And how old are you when you got promoted to Houston? I want to say I was what twenty eight when I was here. I'm real bad at those. I think I was maybe 26, okay. 26, 27-ish. And so what transpired in that place, you know, you get promoted, you go to Houston, that led to your salvation? So I go to Houston. It was supposed to be only eight months, 
eight months that I'm in Houston. We're going to close the store down. No one wanted to take that because no one had to move for eight months and then go back. So they offered it to me. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm like, man, I'll take it. Anything to get out of here. So I took it and I took my sin with me. So we're over there and there's no family. There's nothing. So like, okay. So we started clubbing, started drinking Mm -hmm. a little bit, but nothing the way I used to before. But I was miserable. Relationship wise, I was miserable uh katrina hits all these things happen go chaos and i'm like okay so we close the store down and they asked me where do you want to go you can come back to mccallan new mexico arizona uh el paso everywhere they had peter pipers dallas or san antonio so like, ah, i'll go to san antonio why'd so, you pick san antonio i just i didn't want to go back to the valley okay you know, well, i mean why not arizona or it somewhere? was probably closer to, you okay. know, for me to okay. drive and everything okay. too okay. so uh so I picked San Antonio. We came down here, just checked it out. Like, all right. So it helped me move over here. So that's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm fine. I mean, I like San Antonio. Everyone's friendly. I thought everyone was friendly. I'm driving down the river center. Everyone's going like that. Uh, you know, the river walk. Everyone's going like, man, San Antonio's real friendly. Uh, and then I keep driving. I was like, and I was like, man. Well, I didn't realize my headlights were off. They were all trying to signal me. <laughs> <laughs> they were all trying to signal me that my lights were on. Like, oh, okay. But yeah, so. I, I'm here working for Peter Piper. Finally, I get the store in Rhythm in, and okay. that's when uh, uh, Pastor's daughter, Danielle, yeah. she's working there. Ah. She's working there. Here I go. And I remember uh, she would witness. I had my friend Hector. I brought him along with me to that store, and she'd witness and witness. And I remember uh, I'd be in the office, and there was something different about her. There was always something different about her. And Hector would be like, Hey, do you have like real friends? You know, he was real text mix man from Laredo. So he'd, he'd be like, you have real friends? Like, are they normal? You know, and she's like, yeah. <laughs> and he was always, always asking all these weird questions. Like, dude, just leave her alone, man. <laughs> so she would always witness to us until one day I was like, hey, where's the church at? You know, and uh, I was going relationship wise, man. I mean, so you're still going goes. through everything you yeah, were going yeah. through. And still then going here's through. this person, which, which by the way, shout out. Danielle, yeah, smiley yeah. signer, represented. Uh, but what made so, you ask her? Yeah, huh? What so, made you ask where the church is? Well, she she was always like witnessing, man. Yeah. She's yeah. always witnessing. And, and I'm kind of like, like man, I, I remember, this. yeah, at one point I was like, no, I'm good, man. I'm good with that, you know? Because uh-huh. uh, I've seen a lot of Christian people that would always drink and everything like that. And to yeah. me, it was like no difference, you know? My friend, uh, Tavo, you know, uh, I, like he ended up being a supervisor here. And I remember he was church going and I remember taking him out and started drinking, man. He left the church and at that point I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. So to me it was kinda of like and then finally I took the I remember I was I was I got in a big fight okay. with my ex girlfriend. And I was like, you know what? All right. So I go to church, go to church and everything. And I remember staying in the truck for a while because I see these guys walking around with ties and I'm like, Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. You know, so I finally got off. And so you're thinking it's some religious thing. Yeah. You're just thinking it's something know? religious. So I got off, and I remember pastor preaching, preaching, and I was like, what? Like, it seems like everything was preaching about yeah. was just about me. Of course. Mm. So everybody, yeah, hey, yeah, everybody no, I know, says that. Hey, I see it now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at one point, I remember I told Danielle, like, did you tell your dad about me? What are you telling? She's like, no, he writes his sermons, you know? Now I understand yeah. everything. But at that time, I was mad, man. <laughs> But uh, Juan is sitting down right in front of me. So I'm over here like, man, should I raise my hand? I'm like, dude, like, okay. The people speaking in tongues, I was kind of like freaked out. You never heard that or had you heard that? No. Okay. That was new, you know, so I'm kind of freaking out. And Juan turns around and says, hey, you want to pray? I was like, yeah, I guess so. (laughs) So he prays. (laughs) We pray, man. And and I remember uh, he would call me every once in a while. And uh, to this point, we're, we're real good friends. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got saved. I got saved. And I remember people were freaking out. And I was a cusser. I would drink or anything I'd like to drink. And uh, people were freaking out on me. Yeah. You know, they didn't believe me. I'd go back to the valley. I was going at least once a week sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I remember I went back and I witnessed to my ex-wife and her family. They're sitting down. And me and my friend Rick, we went at one point and we started witnessing. Oh, so when I got saved, I remember after a while, uh, it had already been three years, about three years. And I remember I called my son's mom too, saying, hey, you know what? I'm sorry for everything I did. I realized mm-hmm. it. 
everything you know i messed up on and she's freaking out she's like what mm-hmm. like people were just freaking out on me yeah so i was a whole different person and so uh, was it uh was when you prayed that prayer God. with uh with juan was it uh was it like a uh like a radical conversion or was it kind of like a gra- you know you know some people they they pray and then it's like this gradual dynamic right. of change and but then there's those that get saved they pray and it's like it just it ignites and they just take off for jesus what was the dynamic with yours no, with it your was salvation? it was radical man okay. yeah i didn't feel what i feel with my grand with my uncle uh-huh. you know i didn't feel the chills or anything like yeah. that it was just a prayer but i remember i was like something in me changed man Praise something God. me changed and then hanging with, around with these guys so i mean and so you know kind of just to kind of detail it for people it's like you know what do you think was different what do you think was different at that moment from other you know other people witnessing to you uh, you know, he, some, him, somebody pray for you, and then here it is, you're in this church, you hear a sermon, someone prays with you, and something clicks. What was that? What do you think it was? I mean... Well, first of all, I hadn't heard about Jesus Christ, okay. the way the message was. Okay. Okay, that's why I was saying, going to church with my mom and everything. It was never like Jesus that. was... No. Uh, I'll tell my wife, I'll tell my wife that uh, I remember Treasure and Lazarus and Richie, I'd freak out because everything they knew about church and Jesus. Yeah. And I was like, man, they know more than Jesus about me than, yeah. than I, than what I know, you know, as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I didn't know. I just knew him as a man on the cross. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'd wear him as protection when I was in high school. I had a uh, crucifix. Yeah. But I had never known the reality, the reality and the truth of what he did for us. Wow. And I was like, whoa, like, okay. And it seems like everything that was preached, you know, by my sins and everything, I'm like, man, it brought conviction. Mm-hmm. It's like saying, hey, you're guilty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had never heard it like that. So you prayed that yeah. prayer and then you go back to work. You're not, you're no longer cussing. You're no longer. Yeah. I mean, the cussing, slowly. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's slowly. Yeah. Gradual. I didn't just stop like that. Okay. Yeah. I even cussed when in my baptism. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, out of the water, I took a step and I slipped. I'm like, oh, bleep. You know, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> okay, but the dynamic of your life in yeah, general But as far shifted. as the drinking, yeah, yeah as far okay. as the drinking, it just it stopped and everything. Uh, Did you have any withdrawals or anything? Uh, when you no, quit? man. No. Praise God. No, no withdrawals. Uh, no withdrawals. And a few weeks after that, I mean, I, I'm still in fornication, you know, mm-hmm. but a few weeks after that, uh, I think it was Victor Lopez and a few guys. They invited me to a uh, men's, no, not a men's, a uh, single seminar. Oh, at okay. Rubies. Mm-hmm. okay. So they invited me there. So I'm there, and that's the first time I heard about fornication. Mm. So I'm listening to Pastor Ruby preach on this. It's taking me back, way back to when I was young. And I was like, whoa, I did that wrong. Dude, I did that wrong. Like, what? Wow. And I remember going and I told, uh, my ex-girlfriend, I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, we're living the wrong way. We're living the wrong way. One of us has to leave. She freaks out, man. So I packed all my bags. I was homeless for a few days. You know, I mm. slept at Peter mm-hmm. Piper one time. And I called the company saying, hey, you know what? We're going to do the carpets. Just light them <laughs> so I can sleep there. Then went to the valley for two days. And someone opened up their house. And uh, I was doing good, man. It was a radical conversion. And I remember going back. It was the sixth month that I was saved. Six months. That's why I know about ministry now. Mm. So we have a, every year would have a convention in Vegas. So we're there and I'm witnessing the first day, man, people are freaking out. They're like, man, Edgar, did religion change? You know, it's Jesus Christ. And I'm witnessing right and left, praying for people. And uh, we're there the second night. They're doing a toast, small little champagne glass, about this much filled. And Rodney looks at me like, hey, man, you're not going to drink? Like, nah, bro. He's like, Dude, it's just champagne. It's not alcohol or anything like that. Yeah, champagne is alcohol. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, well, I mean, he's like, it's just for a toast. Eesh. So I took a sip. You know, I drank it. The devil. And that night, that night, I remember I was like, man, I started craving it. Craving Ooh. the beer. I tried. I started craving the beer. Yeah. And uh, my boss, that was there once again. We're there. And he's like, man, why are you acting like you're drinking, bro? Because he saw me leave the alcohol. He saw me change. Uh-huh. And he was happy for me. So I remember he gets my beer and he's like, you're really drinking. I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, what are you doing? He got after me. He was drinking, but mm-hmm. he got after me. Mm-hmm. 
And from there on, it seemed like I couldn't stop drinking anymore. It lasted for about a month. Uh-huh. And uh, Roger, the times I would go to church, the times I would go to church, I'd leave during the altar call. Yeah. And then Roger got Ooh. me one day and he prayed for me. And I stopped. But I would, always, I, I would always say, man, I left this, I left that, I left that. Roger's like, you know what? Yeah, you're always saying you left this, you left the drugs, the girls, alcohol. But God wants you to know that he's the one who helps you. Mm. So he prayed, led me through a prayer, man. I cried. And I was like, man, okay. And we were there struggling for a while, man. I didn't want to give in. And yeah. after that, man, I've been sober. I've been wow. sober. How many years now? I got it. Uh, that was in July, August. It was about August. Because I think the the picnic was towards the end of August or September. Mm-hmm. So many years now, like what? Oh seven. I don't. Know. Yeah, it's been oh well, seven. Uh, Fifteen huh? years. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. years. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, I mean, I would have yeah. figured it out, but I would have had to go like this. Yeah. So Crazy. once, yeah. yeah, once that happened, man. I mean, uh, I got involved more at church with the prison ministry. Okay. So my job, yeah. Peter yeah. Piper. Yeah, where was you? Where was you doing then at prison ministry? Uh, we went to. We we're doing Catula. We went there. to Delhi. I think it was Dilly and then Hondo, yeah, Hondo. Yeah, then Hondo opened us Brisco and yeah. Brisco Catula, then Hondo. Yeah, we're doing all those. I would tag along. Uh, I was tagging along for a while with the guys. Just man, I was getting, I was going Tuesday, Thursdays if I could. Whoever goes Wednesday to another one, I was just tagging along, Praise man. God. I mean, I'm single. How was that? Was God moving up in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, man. I was excited, man. It was like, especially in Catula, it's like a, was it Catula? Yeah, it was like a whole service. You have a hundred guys. Did you get there. to preach in there? At first, no. You know, I gave uh-huh. my testimony, and I think it was Delhi. It's a smaller unit. And me and Val had just gotten married. We had just gotten married. And I was like, no one's going to go for Christmas? It's Christmas. Yeah. No one's going to go. And George is like, no, man. You know, and I was like, dude, I'll go. He's like, you just got married. It's your uh-huh. first Christmas together. And I was like, well, I'll go with you. So we went. That was my first. You know, to me, it was like, man, that's my foot yeah. in the door to at least preach uh-huh. and minister. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I started. It was a Christmas. Um, I went and ministered. And uh, my wife went with me. That was our first Christmas together. We didn't have the kids. They were with yeah. their dad. So she went to you with, with you too? Yeah, the, she just stayed in the car. While, oh, okay. Yeah, we, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good way to spend a Christmas ministry. Yeah. Table. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so she stayed in the car. But yeah, I mean, it was good, man. I just got involved. Wow. Being at Peter Piper, it was hard for me to get involved in a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I went to very minimal concerts and yeah. even ushering. Yeah, I remember I was thinking back, we were talking, I was talking to Daniel before the thing, before the, we started, and I was like, yeah, I remember Edgar when he was a new convert, but I remember you, I remember you were scarce because of your job. Yeah. Like, your job was real, real consuming and stuff, and so you would come and you would try to be there, but it was so, so much demand on your life because of right. the, the position that you had, and then, uh, and then, uh. I think I, I think I left. I think I got sent out or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, because I don't remember much after that. Yeah, still I was still there. Nineteen years, man. Oh, wow. But we're going on nineteen years. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so here you are now. Now let's talk about your new marriage. Yeah. Uh, how did you meet your wife? Man, I don't want to say the wrong thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, she'll correct us. Yeah. She no. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be next. Uh. No, uh, we met there at church. Okay. We met there at church. I won't go into detail because then uh, I'll get in trouble if I see. <laughs> She'll correct me. But no, uh, we're there. We're there. And, you know, through the fellowships, mm-hmm. uh, that's one thing I think it's important when you fellowship. Amen. Uh, as, as a group, you see the way they are with other people. Yeah. Uh, you see the, the way they are. You know, they're not just, you're not always hovering over them. You let mm-hmm. them be and. Mm-hmm. You watch that, and I remember I started kind of like, man, like, hey, Rick, that girl Val, man, what do you think about her? Because mm-hmm. when the first day my friend Rick came to church, when I brought him, uh, mm-hmm. I remember I went to the valley, picked him up. He had just gotten out of prison, picked him up, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I remember he hit on her the first day. He's like, really? hey, yeah, I'm over the outside. He's like, hey, what's your number? <laughs> He's like, hey, bro, you don't do that. He's like, we don't do that here? Like, oh, man. Oh, really? So, so I was like, hey, what do you think about Val, man? He's like, Dude, bro, she's always like has this glow on her face. She's always smiling, and I'm like, man, like, dude, she likes you, man. And I'm like, he told no, you, he yeah. told you that she likes yeah, you. Yeah, he's like, she likes you, bro. And like, quiet, like, dude, you can't tell. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, fellowship. And I remember one time, man, I was just like, 
like thinking about it, you know, like, okay, like you're single, you have that struggle and everything. And I remember I was like, okay, God, I remember uh, I was reading my Bible and just thinking of all these things. And I remember Adam and it said that God put him in a deep sleep, right? Because I had all these desires, man. I would tell pastor, pastor, how do I know what girl is for me? Or, you know, I want to be a family, man. Mm -hmm. Because that desire of having a family Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then walking away from it. Dude, it did something to me where I wanted that back. And when I did get saved, my ex-wife, she had already gotten pregnant, married and everything too. So it had been three years. So, I mean, there was a, I wanted that too. And I would talk to pastor and some of the brothers and they're like, God has something. Someone for you, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I remember I would always talk to Pastor about this too. And it said that God put Adam in a deep sleep. And I'm a, I'm still a new, you know, new convert. And it says that he brought the woman into him, you know. So mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, you know what? The way I saw it at the time was like, man, okay, I'm gonna put all my desires to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna wait on God, you know, and mm-hmm. see what God does. Amen. So well, I'm there, man, and it started to grow little by little you know, seeing her and I would always pray to God, God, I want someone who's going to love you more than me. Mm-hmm. Someone who's going to love my kids more than what I love them. Mm-hmm. And not necessarily that, you know, I'm not going to love, them. I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, let that person love more. But it's just when I was in a relationship, I remember the person that I was with was embarrassed of walking with me and my son mm. and everything. At one point Whoa, I had, those were big crazy. fights. I was like, man, like, yeah, something. Like, are you embarrassed because I have a kid? Mm. So that was one of my desires. So, like, I want someone who's going to embrace that. Embrace my kids, man. But uh, I want a godly woman. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. with time and everything, I started uh, just talking to Val. Mm-hmm. Started talking to Val. And it's crazy because, and then she'll probably talk a little bit more about it, but her marriage and everything, the way it was before, how she was left and, you know, basically mm-hmm. – Use verbally and all that stuff. It's almost like God gave me that second chance to, mm. you know, because I did the same thing. Mm. And God has put us, God put us together. And I wow. mean, she's a godly woman. Praise Amen. God. Very wise. I, I love her. Absolutely. Great mother. Amen. You know, great partner to me too and everything. And awesome. I know she loves God more than me because <laughs> she'll probably see, say, see ya. <laughs> you know, we get in fights and everything and I'd, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And she's like, all right, go. And I'd be looking for her like, man, where's she at? Where's she at? I'd open the closet door and she's there praying. I'm like, oh, man. I closed it. Praise like, God for a prediction. <laughs> but no, yeah. How long you been married now? Uh, it's We're going to be going on 14 years. Wow. Really? Yeah. 14 That's years. Awesome. Congratulations, man. Is that yeah. correct? 14 years? 14 years. Congratulations. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I still man. remember after Peter Piper, I remember the fifth year, man. I'm in the intersection and it dawns on me. It's like, wow. Cause I would always hear, man, if you can make it five years yeah. and I'm there, you know, at that intersection, I'm like, wow, I made it. Wow. Five years. Bro. So now, yeah, we renewed our vows. Amen. We were here 14 years. Re- what did you renew your vows? Uh, 10 years ago. Oh. I mean, 10, <laughs> at 10 years, at 10 years, <laughs> at 10 years. <laughs> You're like Four some years quiz, ago. Some yeah. quiz yeah. You know, yeah. no. uh, that's powerful, bro. Uh, uh, that's, I mean, that's exactly what, what God does is he just redeems, restores and stuff. And here you are now, it's you inspiring. and your wife, and you have a, you have a little daughter. Yeah. Our little daughter. Amari. Yeah, that's, yeah. we weren't planning. She has three kids. Yeah. I have three. And yeah. uh, I, I always say we have a total of seven, you know, when, yeah. when they ask. But uh, she had three. I had three. So we were always like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. You know, and they were all getting together. So we weren't planning it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had a surgery. They pulled out her gallbladder. Uh, she got off the birth control. And here comes Amari, you know. Wow. Praise God, man. So, yeah, she's a blessing mm-hmm. to our lives, too. So. And so so now mm-hmm. here you are. You're a door director. And so uh, you want to get sent out one day? You and your wife want to get sent out? Yeah. <laughs> you want to find your Yeah, it's up to God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Like, I do. My podcast. I'm just going to watch my other no. podcasts. Just, no. no. Praise God, bro. And so you're you're ready to rock and roll for Jesus, man. Yes, sir. And your mm-hmm. wife, man. Praise God. Hey, bro, I think it's going to be awesome, dude. Like, you know, one day when you get sent out and... Uh, you're out there pioneering somewhere, you know what I mean? And I have to be calling you guys, hey, Luis. And I'll be like, <laughs> Pastor, Luis. I'll be like, bro. Please, I don't Pastor, ha- don't answer me. I'll be like, I have no availability to <laughs> 2026. No, just, uh, 
Um, dude, I think that's great, bro. A powerful testimony, man, and uh, just what God has done. I remember so clearly, bro, uh, when you were a new convert. You know what I mean? I remember when you were in the ch- when you came in the church and stuff, and uh, and um, you know, seeing you come and go and, and things of the sort, and you know, kind of getting to know you. Uh, you know, just you know, while was there, you know what I'm saying, and to see everything that God has done you know and you and your wife up to this point and uh and to see what you're doing now i think it's real powerful you know see you running things there at the mother church and stuff i think it's great and uh i'm sure god has powerful stuff powerful. for you and your for you and your wife and your family amen and stuff. where are we at in time daniel 50 minutes um well i mean i think we, we'll wrap it up right there daniel what do you think okay so um powerful powerful testimony amen. and so uh f- coming up Inspiring. on the next episode is going to be mr eric garcia's wife uh, Miss Valerie, and uh, so we're going to close it out right there. Is there anything, uh, Edgar, that you would tell someone before we close? Someone that might be watching this episode and, you know, somehow going through similar things that you've been through, that you went through. What would you tell that person that's watching right now? To seek Jesus wholeheartedly uh, because when you're in even even when I was a sinner, okay, I, he, you know, I was a family man. I had everything. There's this blindness. You know, it's like you get deeper in the sin. There's this blindness that that you can't see clearly, man. You, you yeah. I had a friend. His name was Joe mm-hmm. Moreno, just like the pastor. And he told me at one point, like, Edgar, I mean, all these people saw the signs. Mm-hmm. They saw the signs. And I pushed them away because I was so self-centered. I was so focused on what? Edgar won it, mm. and he told me, he's like, Edgar, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Mm. And I was like, all right. I ignored it. P- I mean, people were reaching out left and right, even non-Christians. Yeah. And uh, I know I had family members. I grew up in a family where divorce was rampant. I mean, mm. divorce, everyone. My mom, my stepfather divorced like three times and got mm. married. Wow. But uh, my grandparents, everything, and... uh it, it's through divorce, the ones that are going to get hurt the most are the children mm-hmm. and family members. And uh, yeah, there's this blindness. And you got to stand back and say, okay, what really is going on? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we're so centered on what we want, mm-hmm. and it's a selfishness that we have. And it, it, can, you know, it can ruin a lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And you may not find out till later. years later. Man. Well, I think it's. Uh, I think that's very. That was uh, powerful. Uh, very powerful, and uh, and so if you're watching out there, I mean, this is a perfect example of how God can, how Jesus can restore and redeem a life. But you know, seek Jesus. You know, let God do something uh, in your life, something different that you know, because you know the the stuff that we sacrifice uh, because of the world is it's not worth or what it gives back, and so. The hope we have is in Christ, man. So thank you, Edgar. Amen. Powerful, thank powerful you. testimony. It was thank great. You. And so we're going to close it out. I am your host, Guicho Breach. This is my co-host. Casey K. And we're checking out, and we'll see you on the next one. Right, thank Yo. you, guys. Yeah. Yo, yeah. yo. Yeah.